Welcome back, guys. I've gotten three pieces of heart that you've seen in the previous episodes. And I am just now getting ready to go into the desert temple. I know that there is another piece of heart in this temple, so I will have an extra heart soon. If you use the book Medora on this thing, this tomb, it gives you this cutscene of singing, I guess. And then you get to sit here and watch these stones move. And once it finishes, you are now trapped on this side. And required to go into the dungeon. The Desert Palace. This is a really short dungeon, typically. These guys shoot lasers if you stand on their side. The other enemies just come out of the ground really annoying. And then there's these weird sandworms. The red ones shoot fireballs, the blue ones don't. I want to say there's a chest in here. I think that it's this. Nope. There it is. There's the map. I didn't think I got the map in the last dungeon. But you saw it in the original, or in the castle dungeon, so. It's pretty easy to figure out. Up above here, I think this room is just a trap. Where you have to kill all the enemies to get back out. There's nothing actually in here. Twenty rupees. I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, I know. I need to have a key for that door that I just saw. Was it in? No, it wasn't in there. It's in here. There it is. So, for those that haven't played Zelda, basically with every dungeon, there's a item, like a special treasure that's required to finish the dungeon, typically, and to, uh, a lot of the time to get into the next dungeon. With the with the East Palace, the bow and arrow I don't think is really ever required. But uh you have to be at the dungeon to get the Pegasus boots, which are required to get the Book of Medora. There was the big key I just picked up. In the bottom right corner you can see I have the map compass and big key. I don't think there's anything else this way, actually. So I'm actually getting close to finishing the dungeon already. I don't think this room is... Oh, no. I do need this room. Under this jar is the button. And in this room is the treasure of the palace. The power glove. I love the Power Glove. It is so bad. Power Glove um lets you pick up heavier stuff. Like when I was on the way over here, um there were those rocks on the ground. Those can be picked up with the Power Glove. The light blue ones can be. There's also like dark blue or like a dark blackish ones that cannot be picked up. There's some fairies in here if I remember. Yep. That piece of heart I was talking about is over here, being guarded by a vulture. The vulture doesn't care. So, um, with the power glove, I can pick up these rocks. And the, like, there's, there's the, okay, I'm trying, 
there's the light blue rocks, and then there's the big light blue rocks. So those can both be picked up. This is a flying tile room. If you hide in the doorway, these actually can't hit you. So if you don't want to bother with them, you can do that. You can break them with your sword or with other attacks. You can just ignore them by picking up the key, which is you know, one of these. There it is. However, if you think you're clever for skipping most of that room, I think there's actually another one like right before the boss. Not right before the boss, but not before long. I think they actually have two, like pretty close to each other. Here it is. But it's just got another hidden key, so you can ignore it again. There's two red one eyes. Oh, no, just one red one eye. And then uh, it looks like a dead end. But if you watch the, if you see the pattern on the walls, you see that uh, this weird liner doesn't actually go along this wall because it's a fake wall. Sit through the animation. <clears throat> and on to the boss room. The boss of this dungeon is the sandworms. When they come out, those rocks that they fire actually do damage. So you have to avoid those. They're fairly easy to fight. Just stand next to the emergence points, like directly to the side where the rocks will miss you. They each have their own health. I think that if I had the ice rod by now, they're like a one hit kill. I'm surprised this is taking so long. Normally they're easier to kill than this. There's one. These are very durable, apparently. Alright. So when you're down to one, the emergence changes a bit. Now it fires in eight directions. So you have to stay like to the side and a little bit above it, or a little bit below it. Oh, already done. I guess I timed that pretty well. Another piece of heart. Oops. And this is the Pendant of Wisdom, I believe. You need all three of these pendants to get the Master Sword, is the point of finding these. There's only one left, the Pendant of Power. And that is up, way up on this mountain. And there's the Master Sword. And that was the second temple. And I'll wrap up this episode by showing you guys a little something. Now that I have the power glove, I can lift up this to reveal this room where there will be a five rupee under each of these jars. There's 10 jars, so you get 50 rupees for entering. And if you step out and step back in, it resets. So this is when I need money at one point in the game. This is typically how I will farm it real quick. It's fairly easy. So in this episode, we found the, or we went to the desert temple, got the power glove, killed the boss, got the pendant of wisdom and showed this money room. Next time we will head on up to the mountains for the next dungeon and try to get the pendant of power. 
See you all next time.